probably going to regret this being my first YouTube video ever. That was a lie. I did have videos on my channel before this, but they were all under my former name, Fantasy Geek. Anyways, on to business. Hello, I'm your friendly neighbourhood fangirl, and I'm extremely nervous right now. Please excuse the audio if it's terrible, I just got this microphone and I have no idea if I'm using it right. I originally had my first cosplay planned to happen sometime in 2021, but seeing as there's a lot of lousy stuff going on right now in regards to Johnny Depp's career, I decided to pay a somewhat cosplay tribute to one of my favourite characters that he's played, which, as you can tell from the title, is the Mad Hatter. I love Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. Hopefully you're here because you appreciate the film and its awesome characters, even though I know there's a lot of people out there who have despised it for whatever reason that they have. Alice taught me that even in a wonderfully crazy place like Wonderland, you still have the strength inside of you to be brave. And I think that's a pretty strong message. When I found out the actress who played Alice was from Australia, it made me feel really happy too. And don't get me started on Danny Elfman's score for the film because it's pretty good. This is already the longest intro in the world, I'm sorry, but before we start, let me just say that this isn't actually a full-on cosplay. It's more of a gender bent Mad Hatter that's inspired by Colin Atwood's 2010 design. I don't know what to call it, honestly. I've just thrown together an outfit using stuff from my wardrobe and stuff from cabin shops. First, we have just a plain shirt. I don't think you can see this under everything else when I wear the full costume. Which is fine because you never see the Mad Hatter's shirt, I'm pretty sure. Then we have a vest. I couldn't find any vest with a similar pattern or colour to the one in the movie. And I don't have the sewing skills yet to put together one on my own. So this served as a good find. I think it was around $4. The buttons are plastic so it kind of looks a bit fake. But a good deal otherwise. The vest from the film is checkered with diamond shapes in green shades with gold buttons. So this part for me is definitely made do. This is my favourite piece in the costume, the skirt. It has velvet around the waist which as you'll soon see complements the hat and the jacket. And it has lace down the bottom which I find really pretty. Also I said earlier that this is a gender bent cosplay but I'm adding the skirt just because I love it. I'm in no way saying that a female version of Mad Hatter can't wear pants. If you're doing this yourself you can wear whatever you want. Being another charity shop find is probably the most expensive one, since I remember it being around $10. It looks to me like it's been sewn together on the outside to give it a really unique look. That's why I think this really works with the aesthetic I'm going for, because the Mad Hatter's outfit is really thrown together. It's very worn down from the years he spent at the tea party. Just for reference, in the film, he wears pants that have what looks like the embroidery of burn running up from the ankle. Now, this is a jacket that my grandma gave to me. It has these silver buttons that definitely make up for the dodgy ones on the vest. And it's been made out of gorgeous blue velvet. I had this in my wardrobe and thought that it's probably better to use it than buy one from a charity shop that might be in a colour more similar to the one in the movie. Because even though clothes are supposed to be cheaper in charity shops, the good ones can still be very pricey. So I see this as an absolute win. The fact before we move on, Colin Atwood, the costume designer for Alice in Wonderland, if you don't know, said in an interview that if you watch closely, the Mad Hatter's costume changes colour throughout the film. Apparently this idea came from Johnny himself, to have his character's clothes match his mood. This is the hat which my mum kindly assisted me with making. It's made of cardboard with green velvet over the top. The stitches along the top to keep it together have kind of come undone. But that just adds to the Mad Hatter charm. The silky scarf or ribbon tied around it in the movie is a different shade to this, but there are some things I got right. I could get an authentic feather, and I cut this piece of card just to give it a finishing touch. It looks pretty convincing seeing as it isn't a real hat. I tried looking for a licorice pattern fabric near me, but alas, there was none to be found. So when I saw that they were selling the scarf for one dollar at the same charity shop where I bought the skirt, I bought it straight away. <laughs> This probably belongs to an elderly person before me, but I love the colours. And it has another texture to blend in with the Mad Hatter's look, which is what I think it's all about. Also, the ruffles remind me of coral, don't you think? In the movie, I think I recall it being blue, so I probably could have painted this. But here is my thimble. The Mad Hatter is obviously a hatter, 
So he does a lot of hand sewing to add decorations to his creation. He wears this on his finger to protect it from being pricked by his needle. I also found this ring for two dollars. It's shaped like a flower, each part individually put on, which I think is pretty cool. And it's the same colour as the scarf. Those were all the accessories that I got, so let me run through the other main ones that I missed out on, just in case you wanted to know. First, and probably most important one, is the thread bandolier. Is that how you pronounce it? There are around 25 different coloured bobbits on it, according to the Alice in Wonderland wiki page. I'll link it below for you. Another thing I missed is the unique pins on his hat. I'm also missing the multicoloured socks, but seeing as I'm wearing a long skirt, it doesn't really matter for me. And the little brown gloves with white lace. I'm not brave enough to wear a wig yet, so instead of having the Mad Catter's orange curls, I went with rag curling my own hair. To do this, I followed an easy tutorial by a fashion YouTuber, which I'll link down below. It worked really well and looked amazing after I took the rags out after sleeping on them overnight. For makeup, I didn't want to spend lots of money, so it doesn't look perfect, but then again, that's for you to decide. Having the dodgy memory that I have, I forgot to take a recording of the process of putting it on. But here's what I use. I probably used it all wrong too, because I have no experience with makeup. First, a basic primer, which I'm pretty sure is to help whatever you put on afterwards hold on your face well. Second, some white powder foundation, which I tried as best as I could to spread all over my face since I don't have a great brush. And third, eyeshadow. Pink above my left eye and blue above my right. Then a slightly darker shade of pink under each. I don't think I'll ever wear contacts because I'm very sensitive to anything uncomfortable touching me. So the green contacts that Johnny wore in the movie weren't an option. But if you can, those would be a great addition to the Mad Hatter look. Here are some pictures of my finished outfit. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed, whether you were watching this for inspiration or a costume breakdown. Sorry I didn't really get into the details, I promise I will in future cosplay diaries. So please, like and subscribe! You can follow me on Instagram if you want to see photos of different cosplay projects I'm working on. Thank you again.